So if you've got uh, what you perceive to be an anterior rotation, um, then Schamburger says the right side is typically right side anterior, left side posterior. The left side is compensatory posterior, so you might not want to correct that one. It's the right side but dysfunctional. And um, there, is, there is a test that we can do, or the, the leg length test if you want to. I'm not saying measuring it, but then if you look and then the right leg appears longer, which it does, in lying down, and then you just get someone into the longer sitting position, and you notice now the right leg gets shorter, which it does, so people palpate the medial malleolus, and now the right leg is short and the left leg is long, and lay back down again. And now the right leg gets long and the left leg stays short. It means that there is a rotational malalignment present within the pelvis. If, however, the right leg is long in lying and it's long in sitting, there is probably a true long leg on the right, or maybe the pelvis is upslipped. If there's a true long leg, it means the pelvis is level when you are lying and sitting, but dysfunctional when you are standing. If you have an upslip or hip bone shear on this side, so it's all gone up, a ASI is up, the crest is up, a PSI is up, the ischial tuberosity is up, so it's all up on that side. If you've got a, not a shorter leg, you've got an upslip or hip bone shear on that side. If you've got a true long leg, this is level, the leg is long in lying and the leg is long in sitting. And because um, normally if you sit up, because of the anterior movement of the anominate, both legs should appear to go longer and when you lie back down, both legs should appear to go shorter. If you have a rotational going on, it means that initially the right leg is anterior, but because it's already anterior, when he's um, sitting up, the left leg continues, so now the right leg becomes the shorter leg. It appears to, even though it's not actually anatomically short or longer. So what we'll go with is the right side is anterior, which is the most common presentation. If you look in my notes, you can see it. So let's, let's correct that. Have a line inside towards me. Please, put your head in. Here's the right side. So right side correction. This is not a thrust, this is an MET approach. Um, I'll show you two ways. One way, the knee is up. If you palpate the PSIS and feel for bind, so what we want to try to achieve is to bring this anominate on this right posterior because we say it's on anterior. When we feel the bind there, if I get you to push your knee into my hand, so she's pushing for 10 seconds. And now she pushes for 10 seconds. Relax, what I do now is this hand onto the ASIS, this hand palpates a PSIS, and then my hip flexes her hip as I change my position. So as I sort of like shuffle up the couch a bit by doing this movement, I then will encourage posterior movement of this innominate there. Okay, so I'm trying to bring this posterior. Now when you're ready, you and knee push me away again. Push me, good. So this is trying to correct the most dysfunctional pattern that you would present with your patients. Relax, breathe. And as I breathe in and breathe out, I'm going to rotate it around this way. Because if the nominate is out, the sacrum is out, the lumbar is out, the T-spine is out, the C-spine is out. I correct the nominate because if you've got a posterior nominate, the sacrum on that side will be in relative nutation. If that's gone anterior, which I'm saying it is, the sacrum on that side is in relative counter nutation. Okay, so it affects the, the sacral position. All right. Push once more, please, to the last time. So she's pushing. 10 seconds, give or take. Relax, take a breath. And after the 10 seconds, I'm gonna bring the pelvis. Can you see, I'm just encouraging. I, I use what I call the words of encouragement. So can you see, I'm just encouraging the innominate to go back on that movement there. If that doesn't work because I'm using the lumbar, what I suggest is, if I rotate my patient down, so I lock down LS, so LS meaning lumbar sacral junction. So if I lock it down, and now if I put her leg around my hip, so she cradles me, and now if you push me now, so now because I've rotated, I've locked L5 down to S1, it means the nominate's moving on its own, rather than using the lumbar to flex. Because she does all the work. After 10 seconds, relax, breathe. And then from there, I do the same again. So I, I, I roll, so I'm gonna flex the hip as I bring the nominate posterior. And again, if I want to, I can just encourage that movement there. Okay, all right, just have a lie on your back for a sec. Both knees up, lift your pelvis up, 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 come back down, lift up, 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 come back down. I haven't corrected your opposite side yet, because I just wanted to do one side at a time. Okay, 
Okay, good. Can you set up? Not 100%, but I think it's better. Mm. Can you lay back down again? It's definitely better laying down. It's definitely better. Not 100%, because probably I need to correct this one now as well. But uh, what Schamburger says is, when you lay in down, if the leg lengthens when you lie in, so if you sit in up and it's short and you lay down and it gets longer, then the leg it gets longer as the leg it becomes anterior, or is anterior. And that's what Schamburger in 2013 would say. Okay, and that's what I use and I like it and I agree. Um, but then that, that simple technique there would correct most dysfunctions on that right side. All right, cool. Can you have a go? Maybe if you want to have a quick